The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Right. I want to tell you a story. The story is about a guy who I actually just saw him recently, not too far from here. We're on Central Avenue in Cedarhurst, New York. And uh, I saw him at the Oihel, at the resting place of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, which is in Queens, about four and a half miles from here. And uh, his name is Ami Pekovsky. And he's an Israeli guy who, uh, he has a very interesting story. He has many interesting stories. But uh, I'll tell you one story that uh, I just think is very powerful. And that is, he, like I said, he's Israeli, and he, like most Israelis, raised very secular, Israeli, not Jewish, right? So he starts becoming a little bit more uh, religious, and eventually gets to a point where he feels like it would be appropriate for him to be Shomer Shabbos, to keep Shabbos. Now the problem was that he was in retail, and specifically he was the owner of a sporting goods, not really sporting goods, more like sports clothing store in downtown LA. So this was, this was all retail, this was all people just walking in off the street and buying a tracksuit or whatever, and... Um, 95% of his business, literally 95, if not more, uh, percent of his business was all on Saturday. That's when people came and they walked into the store and they tried on clothes and they bought clothes. So he came to a point where he decides, you know what, I have to keep Shabbos. And even though it's going to wipe out 95% of my business and I really don't have a way to recoup that, but I'm just going to have to do, I'll have to do what I'll do, and uh, I'll let the chips fall where they may. He had one problem that complicated it, and that was that he didn't own the building. It was an entire, the building where he had the, the sports clothing store in downtown LA was an entire city block. It was massive. It was an entire city block. And he didn't own it. He rented it. And he had rented it for a 20-year lease. And when he signed the 20-year lease, the owner actually told him, do you know what you're doing right now? You're signing a 20-year lease. I'm not joking around. If you ever think that you're going to break this lease, you will never, ever break this lease. If you try to get out of paying, I will chase you for the rest of your life. You will not get away from this. Do not sign this unless you're ready to keep a 20-year lease. And he says, I know what I'm doing. I want it. And he signed it, and he committed to a 20-year lease. So... The problem was, he was ready for his store to basically go bankrupt, but how's he going to pay the, the rent? So he started looking around for somebody who might want to take over the lease. And he told people, other people in retail, I don't want anything for this. I'm not asking to, you know, to, to take a cut for brokering the deal. I simply want somebody to take over this lease. And everyone laughed at him, and they said, nobody wants a 20-year lease. So he didn't know what to do, and he wrote to the Rebbe. So this was his second time writing to the Rebbe. His first time was after the pork incident. This is the second time. Okay, so he writes to the Rebbe, and he said, my plan is to close on Shabbos. Um, most of my business is Shabbos, but I'm ready to take the hit, I'm writing to the Rebbe, I'm asking for a blessing, that I shouldn't get hurt. That's how he wrote it, that I shouldn't get hurt. So he said he got a response from the Rebbe, very unusual. He received $18 from the Rebbe, a $10 bill, a $5 bill, a $2 bill, and a, and a single dollar bill. 10, 5, 2, 1, 18. And... The Rebbe wrote a response with three points. Echad, point number one, was, and this, he said, blew him away, because 
What he didn't tell the Rebbe, he told the Rebbe in general terms, I'm going to close on Shabbat. What he didn't say was that he had in mind what that meant was Saturday day. It did not mean Friday night. And in his mind, that in the winter, on Friday, when store hours would go past the beginning of Shabbos, he would just continue working, and then whenever he closed the shop Friday night, that's when he would start Shabbos. He was ready to commit to Saturday, not to the Friday night part of it. Uh, you know, in the summer, it's not a problem. Shabbos comes in very late, 8, 9 o'clock, so you can close the store, and it's still not candle lighting yet. But in the winter, when Shabbos starts coming in earlier, he, he, he accepted already that wasn't part of the deal. He wasn't ready for that. Like I said, he wasn't religious. He just was taking on one mitzvah at a time, and this is where he was at. He was at this point where he felt it was the right thing. He's a Jewish person. He owns a store. He should, his store should be, uh, should be Shomer Shabbos, to, to whatever degree he was that meant to him. So, and he didn't tell the Rebbe that was his plan. He just told the Rebbe, I'm starting to close on Shabbos. It's 95% of my business, and I'm asking a bracha for a blessing. I shouldn't get hurt. So I told you there was three points. First point was, point number one, matchil kodem shkiat hachama. Lagadol haschut. You should begin, meaning begin your Shabbos observance, before shkiat hachama, before the setting of the sun, and you will have great merit. So he saw right there what he felt was a miracle, that the Rebbe knew somehow that he didn't intend to close before sunset on Friday. And the Rebbe was basically saying, I'm saying to him, yes, you're going to keep not just Saturday day, but you're going to keep Friday night as well, no matter what time it comes in. The second thing he told him, Lahafitz Torah, mitoch simcha, that you should uh, disperse or disseminate Torah teachings joyfully. And latet, the third one was latet tzdaka shama. You should give tzdaka. You should give charity over there. So and then he had, and again he had the eighteen dollars, the ten, the five, the two, and the one. So he was uplifted by this, and he felt very encouraged. So he says, "Okay, you know what? I got the Rebbe's blessings, and uh, that's it. I'm going to go down to the to the landlord." And I'm going to tell him, I'm a Jew, I'm keeping Shabbos, and I'm breaking the lease, and that's it, and I'm sorry, this, this is what i got to do, i got to do what i got to do. So he marches down to the landlord, the landlord had, a, had an office, and uh, there was a secretary there, a receptionist, and he said, I'm here to see Mr. So-and-so, the owner, and she said, he's not here today. <laughs> so a little anticlimactic because he got himself all hyped up because he got the Rebbe's answer. He marches down. Oh, he's, he's, he's not here. Okay, fine. So he goes back to his store and he's working in the store for a little while. And a little while later, some guy walks in and says, um, I need to know how to. Uh, I, I, I need. I need to know who has who has the lease to this to this uh, building. So he says, "You want to know who owns it? I don't own it. I'm not the owner." He says, "I know you're not the owner. I was just at the owner." So he's like very confused. Okay, yeah, so I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the one renting. He says, I know you're, you're, the, 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 you have a lease, you're the one renting, yeah, I'm the owner. Okay, so, listen, I just tried to buy this building from the owner, and he tells me, you're holding on to the lease. And you got a 20-year lease. And he says, he can't sell it to me because of you. So tell me what you want to break this lease. So Ami was totally blown away. Here he was. He was trying to find somebody who would take over the lease. Then he was ready to go march down and tell the guy, you know, whatever happens, happens. Now all of a sudden, this guy's chasing me. He's begging from him. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. What are your terms that you should, you should, you should break the lease so that I can buy the, the building from the owner? 
So he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like it never occurred to him. So the guy takes out a checkbook and he writes a check. Ami never said the number, the amount. Okay. What he said was, the guy wrote a check. He shows it to me and he's like, will this be enough for you to get up and get out of here and allow me to buy this building? And he said, sure. He tell, he, I don't know the number, but he said that the, the amount of the check, just the amount of that check, was enough to buy a home and to start uh, a factory. And he got into manufacturing, he got out of retail, he went into manufacturing and uh, did much better in manufacturing than he ever did in retail and, and bought a house for himself. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.